Uh, thanks so much, Philip. Uh, thanks to Nanopore for, for kind of providing me the opportunity to present our work again. Um, so as we have heard, I think, a couple of times already through, through yesterday and today's talk, and, and Danny also showed a bunch, um, my talk is mainly focused on structure variance and how we can detect these. Um, here we are roughly speaking about 50 base pairs and larger events, following in five different categories, being like insertions, deletions, duplications, inversions, and translocations. The fascinating part for me always, and I like to highlight this, is like despite the number of structure variants are much fewer than SNVs, the overall impact and diversity in terms of base pairs is much higher. Um, so over the years, my group, but also, of course, others, um, have really highlighted, I think, that long-read sequencing, such as Oxford Nanopore, really improves our ability to identify structure variants compared to short reads. In addition to that, it also gives us access into repetitive regions, as there are some medical important genes in there that we like to resolve, such as HLA, LPA, SMN1 and 2, just to name a few of those. Um, but also, of course, there's this whole new universe of assessing centromeres and telomeres and learning what they are kind of contributing to certain phenotypes. And then one of the things I think it's always a little bit underrated is phasing, so like the detection of two different variants that co-occur in the same molecule, not and how to interpret that in a clinical setting. Um, so with all these advancements, it's, it's kind of became obvious to us that we had to develop a new structure variant caller besides SNFOS1 um, that keep pace with the amount of data that's getting produced over the next, over this year and over the next couple of years. And so we developed SNFOS2, and so here I'm showing you the genome model benchmark across the whole genome. Um, on the left side, you see the default parameters for different programs, and on the right side, you see the optimized parameters for the other programs. SNFOS2 just kept on the default mode. And you can see here, independent of the technology, higher or lower on the nanopore, um, we can show that SNFOS2 is more accurate than others, as well as faster than others. And one of these reasons for that is a complete new implementation of the entire program and including automatic parameter optimization. So we can actually identify structure variants down to 5x or 6x coverage genome-wide, really enabling a scaling of it. In other benchmarks, we, we also look into this challenging medical genes that are around 200, 220 medical genes that we recently put out in the Nature Biotech paper to, together with Gene Oil Bottle. So and also here we see that even compared to the second most accurate, which was QDSV, SNFOS2 was around 10 times faster on the CPU time. And to the, compared to the second fastest as VIM, SNFOS2 was 12% more accurate. So I think just hopefully making the point that we really kind of tried to push the field forward with the development of SNFOS2. But this is just like germline calling, um, kind of interesting, a little bit boring. Um, so like, we wanted to kind of push the field forward a little bit more. And so one of the things I wanted to highlight today a little bit more actually is this kind of population merging approach. And so lots of people I think are still focusing on one single sample after one single sample, but I think the trend clearly goes towards like trios, uh, clearly goes towards population sequencing as there are multiple projects right now. And so there the outcome is really important to get a fully genotyped VCF file across the entire data set. And so traditionally, for example, for a trio of, of genome or bottle, one would, would do, for example, QDSV for single sample SV calling, merge the results. Then we have to go back to the BAM file to read genotype to be sure that the structure variant in sample A is really not present in sample B and not just missed or something like that for intrinsic thresholds. Then we merge that result, and then we finally get this geno fully genotype VCF file that I think is super important for all the association analysis or characteristics, which one is a de novo event, for example, from the first talk. And this takes around 36 CPU hours without the single sample calling measure. In SNFOS2, we, we wanted to solve this problem because obviously this is really a, a big, big issue in terms of scaling and accuracy. So here we implemented a binary file that holds all the candidates on a single sample. And using this binary file, we can do a fully, produce a fully genotyped UCF file just in the first go. So we do single sample calling on sniffles, and then using sniffles for merging those single sample calling um, results, and we directly get a fully genotyped UCF file out. And this is significantly faster. This is like 65 seconds compared to 36 CPU hours in just a trio. So it clearly speeds up. The thing that I really want to highlight, though, is not just this is not just good for a population mode, but also for Mendelian diseases, for somatic variants, being it either neurological diseases or like a t tumor normal um, comparison. And so I think this is really important to nail down and get better and better at it. And, uh, and to Danny's point, question before, didn't hold my ears. Um, 
we, we actually implemented multiple improvements over the last couple of weeks and months. Um, so we're getting better and better, but clearly, the, like, no tool is perfect. So, like, obvious. We are always happy to get feedback and learn from that. Also in the merging thing, so we have now reduced also the novel variant predictions, which should be making your lives easier as well, as well as some corrections in the translocation calling. So anyways, how, how good is that mode? How good does this work? Well, actually, it works really well. We, we assessed the Mendelian <coughs> consistency rate. And as you can see here in blue, Mendelian consistency rate for Sniffles 2 is really high. Um, when you compare it to just single sample calling with merging, for example, QDSV, obviously, we have a lot of missing genotypes. That's exactly what we wanted to avoid. And then when we do the force calling, again, that's the 36 hours um, run, then we see that the consistency is not as high as Sniffles 2. The Mendelian errors is a little bit higher than Sniffles 2. So there's a clear demonstration um, of things that Sniffles 2 improves this aspect of life as well. Um, just for fun, as I always say, like it's a proposal for population mode. We also took like 1,000 genomes, um, data set, 1,000 genomes from nanopore data set, and just produced a genotype VCF file from this set, and just merging these 1,000 genomes took around two hours of CPU time. You can speed that up actually more. Um, sorry, it wasn't CPU time in this case. It was eight, eight threads, but still it's significantly faster. It's like two hours compared to 36 hours from 1,000 genomes versus a trio, right? So clearly faster and better. Um, so one of the things I wanted to show today is also, of course, that we are very in much invest investigating and, and motivated to help the identification of tumor versus normal. Um, here's just one example of call eight, uh, eight to nine. Uh, where Sniffles within seconds basically points out this de novo event or this um, tumor event of P10 deletion that uh, kills out two exons of that important uh, cancer gene. And so, of course, we designed Sniffles 2 with the purpose of not just kind of doing this Mendelian, doing this cancer, but also be ready for all of us. So all of us is a large study in the US right now, uh, targeting around 1 million clinical genomes on Illumina technology, in addition to 2 million genomes on arrays, and really tries to help us to interpret genomic data for clinical purposes further. In that aspect, uh, multiple centers have actually also gone forward and do long read sequencing, including the prod as well as uh, UW, as well as us. And so we selected Oxford Nanoporous as one of our work ho horses to do so. And so what I wanted to show today basically is more of a production aspect of Oxford Nanopore, because often we hear research talks, but it's always good to also know how good it is scaling and how good it is. we can just load the machine and walk away. And so what we have seen over the last, over the first 70 samples or so that I put on this slide is that we have uh, around the 90, 95 gigs per yield per flow cell of Q10 plus reads. So that's all passing reads, not failing. Then 50 is around 20 GB. Error rate is 2 to 3% around this. Um, and I think it's, it's really great because like, you have to keep in mind with a program like all of us, the samples have been already extracted. DNA has been already extracted for short read purposes. So we're basically working on this extracted DNA. And for that, I'm kind of really happy with these results. Um, we are currently also putting together new tools for that whole purpose. Uh, one is for SDR calling. We're extending SDR spy. Courtney had a nice poster about that forensic application, as well as back to a CNV caller. But like, since it's just 10 minutes, I can just talk very briefly about them. So the last thing I want to mention is like going away from kind of more germline structure variant into something that, that is very interesting for me, and I want to pursue that more and more over the next coming months and years, which is like somatic calling or, or mosaic calling in that sense, where we are trying to identify variants with low variant early frequencies. So like here, for example, we spiked in HG002 with different concentrations into the, genomic into the genomic data of its mother, HG004. And the goal was to be able to identify with a high precision um, like such a case as like this insertion event where you can see only three reads are supporting it out of ADX coverage, which is rather hard given kind of the sequencing errors and other things that we have to deal with, PCR artifacts and so on and so forth. And in short, because I'm running out of time, Sniffles 2 can do that. So in orange, you see the recall curve across the 55x coverage data set. In gray, you see the force calling mode. So that's when we know the variant, if it's present or not. And so basically, you see a difference because like some variants are not presented at all in the data set, or some variants are just represented by one or two reads. And we can right now not go down to that level without killing our precision that we so dear love in human genetics, for example. 
But you can see here in blue is the default mode, and in orange is the some, um, mosaic mode. We see that the overall precision is kept very high. And that was exactly our target that we reached. Um, so really quickly, uh, we also sequenced, of course, an MSA brain sample with uh, collaboration with Christos. And we identified a candidate SV uh, where we have compared it to bark alumina and optical mapping. We have just produced seven, eight runs of single cell alumina data so we can compare our ability of how good are we with compared to single cell genomics and its own to kill this variant allele frequency. So to sum all up, all of us is up and running. Uh, it's running actually really nice. Some new tools are coming out of my lab. I hope you guys are excited about that. We really try to not just help us, but also help you guys to, to find new biology and, and fascinate us. And Sniffles 2, um, uh, it's increased accuracy across established benchmarks. Over the last few months, we have developed it further, but we haven't released that version yet. Um, strongly decreases the computational cost for structure variants, therefore can scale. Uh, merge of two more versus normal sets is possible and actually works really well. And then Mosaic SV calling will improve resolution of SVs. In that particular angle, and I think, I hope, we can resolve new biology with that uh, application. So in the end, I want to thank my OMA lab, especially Moritz and Louis, who, is, who drove this project forward. Thanks to HTSC, UCL, PNRI, and funders. And if you're interested in any of this work or work with us, please reach out. I'm always happy for collaborations or new people that want to join my lab. That's it. Thank you so much.